Is, in. is Pakistan really the best place on earth for overseas Pakistanis to return to? Assalamu alaikum guys. So today's topic of the vlog is why did I choose to move from the UK to Pakistan? Why is Pakistan the best place for overseas Pakistanis? I'll tell you but before I go into it I want to just make mention that the pushing factor for me to actually move here I need to put my sunglasses on. Very sunny today, it's 37 degrees and that's a helicopter above there. I'm not sure if you can see it but yeah it's just pretty from that direction there which is uh, Murray towards Murray towards the, I mean the planes do fly across here that go to uh, Skargu so I'm not sure where the helicopters come and it's just carried on over the Salamabad the main pushing factor that brought me here was the visit in 2017 when I visited my wife cousin's wedding and I wanted to stay because I saw that they built the house to their spec and it was really comfortable and I thought I could do the same thing that was the inspiration but the pushing factor was a mortgage now, although interest is haram in the UK and the West the opinion of the scholars that one mortgage is allowed I wasn't comfortable with it my wife wasn't comfortable with it we were looking for a home we were about to buy a home put a deposit in but then I didn't really want to be tied down to a 30-year mortgage pay the monthly installment a lot of which will be going towards the interest for 30 years of your life I didn't really see myself seeing that as an achievement and as our struggles to find a home prolonged and then COVID came and house prices doubled all of a sudden like overnight literally that was the push factor we were like you know what this place is not for us we kept visiting every year I was showing my role the different parts of Islamabad or what Islamabad has to offer why should we live in the UK when our forefathers originally came from these lands what did these lands offer us that the UK can't and really it's everything we feel much more comfortable here much more happier here much more healthier here I don't need to remind everyone how many health issues our community is facing in the West whereas yeah the elderly here that are fit and healthy and able to walk around sit down walk around eat well and stay healthy just look at our skin our skin's a different color we can't be absorbing enough vitamin D there's a vitamin D right there we can't be absorbing enough vitamin D in the Western countries so hopefully I will go back home discuss with my wife because obviously together we discuss how how or why we're going to live here and really the main question is whatever the reason was was it worth it are we happy now almost two years in is Pakistan really the best place on earth for overseas Pakistanis to return to are we back home then welcome so Myra mm -hmm. we've been here two years so we did a podcast in the UK of relocating from the UK to Pakistan and at the time everyone was saying you don't have a clue what you're getting yourself into you'll only last three months they will eat you alive over there you're not gonna last you don't know how to live there you can't fend for yourself there you can't survive there you can't earn enough money there you just won't be able to do it two years in we're still here so I thought that we need to do the traditional thing save up we wanted to buy a house in cash but the prices just kept going up and up and up and it was just it became double. impossible then we'd um gone against our values <laughs> and we thought you know what the scholars some of the scholars are saying a lot of the scholars i think actually are saying that you can have one mortgage but we were still uncomfortable and we even we were even about to put the deposit down a few times very weren't close, we very close i think it was twice we were about to and something would just happen and we'd be like oh no let's just wait or something else would happen just as we're about to do it one of my friends would say do you know what even though i've got a mortgage there's no baraka in it i wouldn't recommend it for you i want the best for you blah 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 Each time happen, somebody I... different would talk about mortgage and talk about interest and how bad it is randomly um, once we were gonna um once we were going gonna go for it, it was Ramadan and my one of my friends messaged me, she said, I don't want you to lose out on anything, but it's Ramadan and I don't want you to do this in Ramadan. Yeah, so randomly people will contact us. Yeah, so it just wasn't <laughs> it just wasn't happening for us. Well um, I, I set out set out with a five year plan that we can go and live here in Pakistan in the next five years. One of the things because we didn't know how we would earn and live in Pakistan so we still wanted to carry on with our lives in the UK as you would. And it was only what, three years in to my decision of moving to Pakistan, did we try to make this next step in our life and buying a house, going for a mortgage. Myra was still undecided as to when she wants to move to Pakistan, whether that five year plan would be 
long enough for her to get her mindset and ready to move and make this big jump really she wasn't really 100% there anyway I think this mortgage issue was a pushing factor more for Myra than it was for me yeah and I think it's because of all the things that you were saying you kept saying things like um, you know 30 years of our lives 30 and by then I was all you know we were getting close to 30 or oh, we probably were I can't remember now how old we were but we were getting closer and closer and closer to 30 and I was just thinking 30 to 60 I'm just gonna be working like this paying a mortgage making ends meet do I really want to live like that I don't really want to we didn't have any kids at that point we still don't generally people want more stability you know when they've got kids and I was just like why am I gonna do this to myself for what reason really um, so eventually it just started making sense that what I want the most is just to peace yeah. and do I really want to be in something that I was initially saying that is haram and now I'm bending the rules for a worldly yeah. reason yeah. Uh, and then all the things that you'd been saying you were always talking about Pakistan weren't you I really didn't think I was going to move to Pakistan I was just saying to you, you know, let's first buy a house, <laughs> let's buy a house first and then we'll see, we could put it on rent, we'll be more stable and then we'll leave. But I, I didn't really have any intention of coming here. Um, sorry to break that to you. <laughs> but all that brainwashing that you did and you kept bringing me here, it all paid off. Um, so, the reason why I came here was because what I wanted the most was peace of mind. Uh, I wanted a nice slow life now that I was getting old, as I was getting older uh, as in getting close to 30 or probably was 30 now by this point when we decided didn't we yeah I was yeah. 30 and 35 now uh, and I was like I just I just want to live a slower life I don't want to be living like this a stressful life um, I wanted to work less I wanted to focus more on you know things that were more meaningful than having a, uh, you know buying a house uh, and I think that's what did it for me eventually and um, yeah so there's people out there that are in mortgages that have a mortgage I mean before we go into other people has it been worth it is this the best place for us to live right yeah. now yeah. yeah so right, right now, now yeah this is the best place for me I'm I'm feeling very relaxed very peaceful all the fears that I had before coming here you know I don't know if it was just, I actually, generally, even talking to other Pakistanis, uh, British Pakistanis, uh, there's this fear, isn't there, that's drilled into us. The Pakistanis there are going to rip you off, they're going to, you know, you're going to... Take advantage. Take advantage of you. And that being taken advantage of is so scary. Why is it so scary? Like, what are they actually going to do? Charge us five pounds extra for something? Yeah. And then what's going to happen? Are we going to die? Yeah. It's so scary, isn't it? You pay that more than that in taxes in the UK. Yeah, and, and it's it's just that fear. I was so scared somebody's going to take advantage, somebody's going to rob us, something. And all those things happened really quickly when we got here. We experienced it all. Yeah, and it's done now. And now I'm like... Yeah, we've yeah. been through it. Well, everyone said we've done it. So, is Pakistan the best place on earth for us? Uh, right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right now, at this point in my life, I'm really happy to be here. I'd, uh, right now, it's the best place on earth for me yeah. because this is where I am. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I, I'm really happy. I'm really at ease and peace here. And I just, I can't imagine being anywhere else. I can't imagine mm. living in England now after the the this kind experience. of culture that I've experienced yeah. here. There's so much culture here. You can just go out and you know how we in England it'd be you know there's a hot it's a hot sunny day and you know people are at the pub they're sitting outside everything's catered for them yeah um, for that lifestyle and we're just hanging about <laughs> and you know maybe going to a dessert shop or you know going to buy a going cold drink beach. or something going to the beach where it's just not for where us where you can't even see them. through the water it's all like cloudy and brown yeah and and here you know everything is catered for us. The, the you know you could go out for a coffee at night. There's rooftop cafes. There's yep. there's just so much culture here. All the things that we can't do in England, we could do here. Yeah. Um, and alhamdulillah, I'm really I'm really really happy about that. Hearing the azan, it's yeah. just um, that's what it's we just wanted. Amazing, yeah. So Pakistan is the best place on earth for us. That's that answered. So there's other people out there that are stuck in mortgages. There's one brother who I met twice, he's, he's on holiday 
in Pakistan for the last five weeks. I met him in his first week here and on the last week here. He's stuck in a mortgage. And he, he said there's no way he's going to pay that £110,000 mortgage off. So he's going to sell his house. He's going to sell as many assets as he has. He's bought land and property here in Pakistan. He's going to try and sell all that off and shift his whole family here and live in Islamabad within the next 12 months. And he's been speaking to businessmen here in Pakistan and speaking to friends and family to try and work out how he can get a income stream. And he can't really do his job that he's doing in the UK at the moment. He's dealing with uh, uh, those uh, child protection laws and stuff. So when when social services take your kids off you, that doesn't exist in Pakistan. So he doesn't have, he can't work here and neither can he work online. So he was really looking into something to get into. Now, he did research in business and stuff like that, but he decided not to go in that route. What he did say instead, he goes, he's going to start making content on YouTube and try and make an income from there and then try and get some more income elsewhere. And everyone is coming to this conclusion that you need 1,500 to survive here. Uh, that means if you're renting and you're living in Islamabad, you're living in a city, you've got a family, mashallah he's got two kids. So 1,500 is still the figure that we said at the beginning and it's still the figure now. You need to start aiming for 1,500. In that earning, you should be having a very, very comfortable life. You should be able to renovate your home and you should have savings as well with that money. And that school, that's um, yeah. a driver, a maid, that's yeah. like a very luxurious life. Yeah, yeah. If you cut those things out, it will be cheaper. And if you live somewhere on the outskirts of Islamabad, it will be even cheaper. Exactly. So 1,500 is to live like a like a, a king here yeah. in Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. You live like the 1% almost. Because people here, 1,500 and straight away, they're like, oh, no, we can never do that. So, but it's in the capital city. You have to remember that. It's in the capital city yep. with a maid, with a driver, your kids going to school that you're paying for. It'll cover, you know, medical costs, going to the dentist, clothes. It's literally covering everything, which is amazing. So okay. there was a viewer who contacted many, many months ago. She is a single mother, I believe. Uh, she wanted to bring her children here to DHA2 in Islamabad for four weeks and she wanted to plan a lot of things. Uh, I helped her with some of her research. Um, so she did contact and told me her experience. So I'll share that with you guys now. So she was saying that she was able to book a car with a driver and if anyone does need a car with a driver do let us know. I do have a contact for that. Uh, in Islamabad that is. She was really ha happy that the driver was always available. Uh, she booked it for four weeks. This is um, the contact she used was through a family member. She doesn't know where they booked it from. So I won't be able to share what she was able to book, but I do have contact in Islamabad. So she stayed in DHA too. She said it was very nice, clean, spacious. Uh, but as soon as you leave the society, it's a mess because it's as soon as you leave, uh, it's basically Bindi is GT Road. Hence why DHA2, uh, Ziraj Housing Society, Giga Mall area, Barry Town, they're quite cheap to live there and buy land and build houses there because because it's practically Raul Bindi there. Uh, so yeah, when you do drive out of those areas, it is kind of uh, the old Pakistan. She said she liked the F areas much better, like F10. Yep, the F areas are the best places. A lot of people are living in the G sectors, which are a bit more affordable. The F sectors are more pricey. And then the E sectors, which is the north part of Islamabad, downtown Islamabad, you can't really live there. She said, my son had horse riding lessons in Baria and also archery lessons. Uh, they took part in watercolor painting classes for a week. Uh, which was five minutes away from our home, so they were in DHA2. Barrytown was 35 to 40 minutes drive away. Giga Mall was six minutes drive away. Yeah, because DHA2 is part of Giga Mall. Uh, so she was really happy with that, things being close by. We used to order food from Food Panda. So Food Panda is very normal to us. It's like our Uber Eats here. So I, I take these things as granted because, you know, this is normal to us. Um, where you can just order anything and you're, you're paying literally nothing more than 30p delivery fee 
and then a map appears of where your rider is. She's able to travel travel around, she's very happy with that. She went to Lok Virsa National History Museum. They went to Manal, which is now closed down. She did her food shopping at Imtiaz Mall or Punjab Kashankari, both are very good options. Uh, they do have a lot of imported products there, so if you're missing things from the UK, you can grab them there, like uh, Iron Brew. Mangoes were spot on, tastier ever, just from, uh, they were tastier from the local vendors. Uh, that's what she was, she was saying. So yeah, she was really happy with her, with her visit here. But really, all the things she's mentioning, I didn't. It didn't make. It didn't wow me. It was like that's our that's my life. That's our life. We we experience that on a daily basis. The mangoes are amazing here. Everything's amazing here. Food panda is really easy. I mean, I ordered earlier. We can even order biscuits on Food Panda. Like you know, those assorted biscuits or rusks some food panda and it'll just turn up we can we can even order tea from the local daba and it'll just turn up they bring you home in a teapot teapot <laughs> if you've got a, guests they'll bring cups as well yeah so it's really really convenient our lives are convenient even like myra she would go a week or so without a curry and she'll struggle <laughs> I can go months without curries, I'm fine. But she, she'd struggle, so here we can get a absolutely delicious grai from a nice restaurant and it, it only cost us, what, five pound delivered. A beautiful chicken lahori grai. So uh, these are all normal things to us. I mean, if we were to go to the UK now, we would absolutely struggle. Not only is all our lifestyle here in Pakistan very, very expensive. If we did like for like, if we started ordering grais in the UK, I'm paying twenty twenty five pound. That that would just that would just that's like quarter of your wage. I don't even think I know how to iron anymore. Yeah, we, we have somebody come. Yeah. <laughs> they pick up our ironing. Um, they iron everything and they deliver it and they charge around. I don't know. Is it twenty p per per suit, item, per or, something, item yeah. or something like that? Yeah. And I haven't ironed in so long, and I don't miss it at all. The thing um, is, whilst you're living here, you forget the hardship you went through in the UK. You really do. Yeah, it's true. And I just wanted to say, another thing that people are generally scared of is having to go to the hospital here. And remember, I had to go to the hospital in emergency. Yep. I collapsed at night. I just woke up and I, I collapsed. It was... Blood pressure dropped quite... Was it like 40? I don't know. It was meant to be I 95 and above. It went to 40. And she just kept collapsing. Um, yeah, I was vomiting, I just I passed out, I had a cut on my nose when I, I got up, yep. it was just, it was a bit mental, I, I got rushed to the hospital, and on the way to the hospital I really thought this is it, I could just feel like I had no energy in my body, yep. I felt a, like a big weight on my chest, I was like, I'm going to die here, this is why I've come, and this all happened, was it just a month after we'd been here? Within, um, all the <clears throat> bad experiences we had were within the first three months. Three to six months. Uh, Airbnb host took us to the hospital because he's a doctor and he, he was worried, wasn't he? And he was just like, yeah. I'll take you. Four o'clock in the us, morning. Yeah, he took us to the hospital and I was just sorted and they sent me home. Yeah. And nothing, you know, nothing terrible happened from that experience. I just went through it. Whatever was meant for me happened and it was fine. We grew through we, it. We were scared of being burgled. I was scared of being burgled. And we did get burgled. We did get burgled within, I think, two months. I think it was only two or three months, you know, I was being here. I mean, we came in October, we got burgled in January. So within three, three months, months, yeah, yeah, we, yeah got three months. Uh, we got burgled. We got burgled, and uh, we had Farhana to deal with the police. He couldn't speak Urdu hardly at all, um, and we got through that. People were like, "You're not going to get your things back. That just doesn't happen here." We got our things back. We got yeah. <laughs> we got our things back, which is amazing. Yeah. So we've had we had all the terrible experiences straight away. But we're still here. Yeah. Some people think, okay, just wait until you get a bumpy ride. They'll go running back. But we didn't. We went through all the bumpy rides. And I wasn't vlogging as much during this time. I know people used to say, oh, where's the vlogs? What's happening? Why Why are you not happy on your vlogs anymore? But that's what was going on around the background. People don't know what's going on in our actual lives. We just don't show it on the camera. So we did go through a lot. I didn't talk about it much. The home wasn't renovated. It was it was like it was quite a big mess. We didn't have a kitchen. We didn't have a bathroom. We were using the one next door, so we lived in really horrendous conditions. Yeah, uh, you could probably see that really in the old vlogs. It yeah. was it was terrible, and um, we had to just stay close because we don't want to get burgled again. Mm. So we had to stay here. We had to renovate whilst we were here. Farhan couldn't still speak Urdu hardly at all, and he was, he did a whole renovation, which probably should have taken like two or three months, and it took eight months. 
and we did get scammed. We found out later that we got charged, you know, double, triple for things and all yeah. that happened. But really now looking back, does it really matter? It you have a fear that's put into us about getting scammed. No. The comfort that we've got now was worth it and yeah. I d- we did things in the wrong order I did things in the wrong order which prolonged things and made issues so we had the ACs fitted in and then we had to rip them back out because I had work done on the rooftop where the outer units were fixed too so things like that kept happening where we were putting things on taking them off putting it back on so that like extended the time so much and we through each phase of the renovation I had no idea what I was going to do so I would speak to Myra I'd be like what are we going to do in this room and she'd be like I don't know what's, what's available and I'll be like I don't know what's available so we had to and do a lot, a lot of, of research we would just go to one place and we'd just be like right pick something from here we'd just pick it because yeah. it was so stressful that time we didn't know we were just like we just needed to be done so we, we can just settle we didn't know the difference between stone granite marble the normal tiles uh, cladding just normal paint we just didn't know what what should go where how it should go how it should tie together things are pulled different things here yeah it was just it was all it was all alien it was all new but very new. alhamdulillah it was it was really difficult it was intense and it's so smooth now alhamdulillah. and um a lot of people when they move here they won't have to go through all that but at the same time one of the brothers that because we met up <coughs> with like seven other people that live here so seven other people that live here in um in islamabad um one of the brothers made a good mention he goes look if you want your life to be comfortable like it is in the west as soon as you hit the first speed bump you're gonna end up running off never expect your life in pakistan to go as smoothly and as easily as you think and imagine it should do it will never go like that you need to expect everything and anything to happen at any time but try and achieve a home try and achieve you know peace in that time that's what we did we went through absolute hell in our first year i mean we couldn't even live in this flat for the first year and then once it was completed we moved in and now alhamdulillah you know it's all paid off we we've completely resetted we've completely reset when we newly moved into now all that hardship is gone and now it feels like we're we're here brand new again and we wish that other people have this same opportunity that they can just leave whatever they've got going in the uk and just be able to live here without any issues yeah if they want to if they want to it doesn't have to yeah it doesn't have to be for everybody um it can be challenging you know some people talk about things um, that my friend came actually my friend visited and she was like there's just ants there's always ants and you remember when we first came and I was struggling with just seeing ants, ants and I couldn't understand were. why are the ants when everything is so clean thousands of them um, no even like the odd one or two like one's just walked into here and I'm like why is it here it's clean in here yeah. we don't eat in here there's no there's no reason for it to be here why is it not but about? people like she was just like i can't i can't cope with it i just can't cope with seeing an ant hanging about in the bedroom what about my friend who said that he can't cope with bitterly going up because then the cooler won't give cold water yeah he was like i just can't drink hot water and then those kind of comments made me realize that actually we're quite resilient yeah because there was a time where we went about three days without water because the our tank water tank that the gravity fed water tank that bees on the rooftop that supplies the water to all of our taps that had to be raised on a uh, on a steel structure the steel structure had to be made in time but the uh, plumber had already cut the uh, cut the tank off so the tank wasn't in use so we were stoked we were like we didn't have water for like three days you know we're using the drinking water weren't we for everything yeah the 19 liter mineral water we were using that to fill the toilet up to to do wudu to drink to shower and obviously you know we've gone that, through times without cold water and people people in the uk you know that your boiler breaks down and you have two things but there was so much else going on for us at the same time as these random things that were happening yeah and it was just like you know, everything felt like oh this is the last straw now <laughs> this is gonna do it i'm gonna have to go back at one point when we got burgled i i remember i said to your dad and i was like I, i'm not doing this now i'm done here i want to go back you wanted to go yeah and it then, was just building up for myra it was really building up for her 
she was <laughs> done she was absolutely done even before that yeah it was it was um it's because this place wasn't ready it was cold we didn't have the we didn't have the things that we needed stray cats were walking in and there was a uh, uh, suspended ceiling here but it had a gap there was a window and the window was open because the ac pipe was going through it and stray cats would be able to get in and they'll urinate and they'll stay here during the night because it was warm in the flat because we had a heater on <laughs> and that was just it was just crazy yeah it was hard um what was i gonna say yeah so it's not really for everyone because it moving to a new country is hard and i think only a certain type of people do this yeah. like the people that we're meeting they're a certain type of people aren't yeah, they yeah they're the kind of people that are just a bit they'll just do things that are not they'll just normal. do things yeah they just do things Anyone um, that, that is known for doing something out of the box, thinks out of the box, does something that's not normal, they're the type of people that end up here. Yeah, I'm not that kind of person. I was saying to Farhan as well, that I'm yeah. the kind of person who would have worked in one job, and lived in the there. same house, on the same street, And at the, the age of 65... I'd be like, I've been here all my life. <laughs> at the age of 65, she'd have a leaving party at the workplace <laughs> that she was at. And she'd be uh, living off her pension for the rest of her life. Yeah. Stuck to the NHS. <laughs> I wouldn't really. I, every like couple of years, I get bored and I change my job. But I wouldn't have done this ever. Like moved to Pakistan. But we're glad we've done it, and uh, Alhamdulillah. we're still here, guys. So thank you for the comments. I love the comments coming in. I love how people are commenting on other people's comments. It's amazing. Yeah. We are reading every single comment, and we're loving every single comment. Yeah. Thank you, guys. See you in the next one. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.